Golf Central. Brought to you by Titleist. History made after 36 holes at the Honda Classic for the first time ever at PGA National. A player played his first two rounds of the Honda Classic without making a single bogey. That player, Ricky Fowler, in the lead at the halfway mark, and what a leaderboard we have. With that, we welcome you into Golf Central. Ryan Burr along with Brandel Chambly and Trip Eisenhower. They say cream rises to the top, and that's exactly what we have at the Honda Classic. You look at one through four, we have what was at one time the number one player in the world in Adam Scott. Sergio Garcia reached number two in the world. Ricky Fowler, number four in the world, and Jimmy Walker at his best, 10 in the world. They are one through four. Pretty good headed into the weekend. Well, the field at the Honda has certainly changed over the years, and it is a class field all the way through and through. And talking about class, certainly at the top of this leaderboard, it really didn't change much all day long with the exception of Adam Scott shooting a wonderful 65 in the second round. But those that teed off late yesterday, early today, had a 1.2 stroke advantages on the others that teed off uh, in the different category. But as that relates to uh, the advantages that Mother Nature bestowed upon those players, Ricky Fowler uh, seems to be playing with other advantages. Uh, we're going to talk about it here in a minute, but uh, he seems to be playing with every asset in the bag uh, redlined. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there have been three bogey-free <coughs> rounds this week at PGA National Champion Golf Course. Ricky has two of those. Adam Scott, of course, has the other one. And if you look at, at ball striking, they say is really important here. Strokes gain T to green, which is a measure of how you're gaining strokes mm -hmm. with your long game. Ranked number one this week through t uh, 36 holes, Ricky Fowler. Number two, Sergio Garcia. Number three, Adam Scott. Number four, Jimmy Walker. I think ball striking has a lot to do with the position on this leaderboard. And speaking of Ricky Fowler, he came into this Honda Classic Red Hot. Three top fives in his last five worldwide starts. Let's get to the action. And as Brando alluded, Ricky Fowler using all of his advantages to play well. Started on the back. Here he is at 12. Yeah, again, uh, bogey free yesterday. And early on, he was tested. Made par at 10, par at 11, but a big miss uh, left of the green at the 12th was uh, circumnavigated nicely. Then we go to the 16th, the middle of the bear trap, and Ricky Fowler in the middle of the fairway, 179 yards away. And Ricky Fowler, the left hole location up on a little tier, not much room at all, but Ricky Fowler, well, he's going to have a good look at birdie. Yeah, straight up the hill. And these greens are fantastic. He's a good swing of the putter. This one breaking left to right. He releases the toe. Center cut. And just like that, he is five under to the third now. The par five still at five under. This yeah. is third. And the wind is downwind on this par five, so got to take advantage of it. Ricky, uh, well, he, easy chip that he's going to have a little more work than he wanted, but he has been proficient inside this distance. But right? just a great look. I mean, if you've got TVR, look at that one over and over again. The butt end of the putter hardly moves, and the putter head swings way back and through and releases. Meanwhile, at the fourth, the five foot nine, Ricky Fowler has all he has, or has all he can chew there uh, in the deep bunker to the left. He lays up and trying to save a par trip. Yeah, trying to stay perfect and 56 yards away. It's looking like we're going to see our first bogey. Uh, he's got about 12 feet left to keep the scorecard perfect. Well, you guys talked about after round one that uh, he was playing good golf but couldn't make any putts. He was 16 for 16 inside 10 feet, including that one to stay bogey free. Yeah, what a way to cap nine, off sorry? the day. That's right. What a way to cap off the day looking for yet another win and poised to do it. He will most definitely be in the final pairing tomorrow. The numbers, they are startling. Only player in the field without a bogey this week. He is the first player to go bogey free through 36 holes at the Honda Classic at PGA National. And maybe most really uh, blar glaring is the fact it's the first time that Ricky Fowler on any golf course in any golf tournament on the PGA Tour has gone his first 36 holes without a single bogey. Ricky feeling very confident heading into the weekend. I've been playing well, uh, and you know I've played well here at this golf course. Uh, living down here for p over five years now, I, I know know how to play down here. Um, so I just had to go out there and just kind of stick to what I've been doing, trust it, play with confidence. Worked most of the time. Only made a couple of bad swings today, so worked out all right. Just happy to go bogey free. Uh, it's a big accomplishment around this golf course. You know, not just one day, but the two back to back. So pleased with how I've managed my game around the golf course. I got a nice break uh, on my 10th hole today, one uh, where I was able to kind of salvage par there. Uh, so every once in a while, you need to get a little lucky. And um, nice that we were able to take advantage of that, continue to move forward. Made some good putts coming in. So something I can take from that and continue to swing well and make more putts this weekend.
So much has been made of Ricky taking the next step in his progression when he went under the watchful eye of Butch Harmon. We head live now to PGA National where we welcome in Tim Rosenford. Tim, what is Butch saying about how well Ricky is playing as of late? Well, Ryan, as you know, Ricky hasn't played out on tour for a couple of weeks, but he's been playing a lot here at home. And what we're seeing here at PJ National is a continuation of the work that he's been doing with Butch and a continuation of what he did last weekend here, last week here, setting course records back to back at the medalist, shooting 66 there on a new golf course, 7,500 yards, 157 on a slope, second hardest car course in, in the United States. And then following that up by shooting 60 with Butch in a cart with him uh, up, at, up at the Floridian. Uh, left his last putt uh, short and in the jar for 59, playing with him that day, Suzanne Pedersen and also Yanni Sen. And as Butch said uh, in a phone conversation I had with him today, what we're seeing is just uh, more and more of the, of the self-belief of Ricky Fowler that continues to come out with each performance. Yeah, he was stung by that loss down at Phoenix and, and the criticism over the play at 17, but overall didn't let it get to him. And as Butch said to him when they sit down for a drink at the Floridian after that 60, uh, he made the point to him that there's plenty of areas where he can continue to get better. Uh, maybe not as it relates to the golf swing because he, he has supreme confidence in that right now, but in other little areas that make the difference. And as Butch said, Ryan, this is all headed toward Augusta, trying to get him confident, remain confident to when we get to Augusta National in about six weeks. Appreciate it, Rosie. More from you throughout the program. I should point out last year's 36-hole leader, Padraig Harrington, went on to win the Honda Classic in a playoff. You look at the par-5 scoring leaders, and Ricky Fowler, you mentioned only five foot nine. He's not a giant guy by any means, but he's able to hit it with the big boys. Well, it's not so much just what he does off the tee, Ryan. It's everything that he does. We look at a lot of different stats to give us some insight into what players are doing and what they might be doing in the future. But amongst those stats at each year's tops with the game's best players, par five scoring average is perhaps one of the best barometers in the game. The reason why is it encompasses everything. You've got to hit it long and straight. You have to make good decisions into the greens. And of course, your short game matters. Case in point, Ricky Fowler, who, yes, is leading this year. This is a statistic that Tiger Woods owned from 1997 to 2009 in his prime years on the PGA Tour. And as a result, he owned the PGA Tour. And, well, Ricky Fowler owned the Deutsche Bank Championship last year with that gutted drive. He hit so many beautiful drives last year. Again, the shortest club on the PGA PGA Tour is those that hit it long and straight. And of course, you do have to be aggressive at some time, at some times, going into par fives. And what a point for Ricky Fowler to take a chance last year at the Players' Championship with, well, three holes in regulation to go. Taking on this right hole location, it must have looked like it was planted in the water. That shot narrowly missed the water, but found well, a couple of feet away and eventually led to Ricky Fowler winning this championship. And again, back to the Deutsche Bank in the final round. And that week he was sublime on the par fives. Here he is with a long bunker shot. And it doesn't matter if it's a long bunker shot or a long or difficult chip. He's up to the task. And again, I alluded to his putting stroke earlier. And it's because of all of these assets, long and straight, taking chances, good around the greens. Only one person beat him in par five birdies at the Tournament of Champions, and that was Jordan. Speed. Nobody beat him in par five birdies at the Waste Management Phoenix Open, and that is a big part of the reason why not only that he's atop the leaderboard this week, but why he's been playing so well since the Players' Championship last year. Oh, he's always aggressive, both with fashion and on the golf course <laughs> trip, but when you're aggressive, it doesn't always mean you're going to make eagle or birdie. It also brings the big number into play. Why has he been so consistent? Uh, look, the swing and the evolution of the golf swing with uh, Ricky Fowler and Butch Harmon, you know, it was a couple of years ago, we may not remember, but he had 16 consecutive tournaments on the PGA Tour with a double bogey or worse. Uh, that's the Ricky Fowler that we saw. He was making big numbers. Enter Butch Harmon. Enter changes in his golf swing. And if we take a look at his golf swing and compare it to what it was in 2012 before Butch Harmon to right at the Deutsche Bank, Brandel, that you just showed, I want you to look at the takeaway. Now, this is the big difference. The club used to drag. The handle would drag and the right shoulder would get higher than the left and he would have to reroute that club. Now the hands are much closer to his leg and you can see the club has moved further along. So he's in more sync with his turn. The turn is more level and from there he didn't hang on his left side quite as much as he did in 2012. So that combination allows for a freer release, a better turn all the way to the top for Ricky Fowler and the, the benefits of that is a lot of power, a lot of accuracy. Yes, it bleeds into the par fives but it bleeds 
into week to week consistency. We saw it in 2014, top five in all four of the major championships. Then we saw it in 2015, breaking out with a multiple win season. And this year, I think it's going to be another multiple win season. The swing is peachy, and it might be pointing to the peach state for Ricky Fowler to get that first major championship at the Masters. And we'll now see how he plays with the lead with that new swing. He's had four, 30, four 36 hole leads in his career. He's never won any of those tournaments. Well, we said the cream rises to the top. The top ranked player in this field is none other than Rory McIlroy. But Rory not on the leaderboard because trouble from the get go. Yes, he started on the back nine and he did make a birdie at the 12th. But uh, this is uh, yet again a poor iron shot. Yesterday he only hit uh, 11 of 18 greens uh, missing both to the right and to the left and he'd pay the price for that one with a double bogey. And then of course forward to the drop zone and trying to eke out a bogey if he could not particularly very good with the wedge shot. Then we go to the 16th hole and a difficult chip down the hill and the chipping this week. Well, this is one of the few bright spots for the short game because it has not been good for Rory McIlroy this week, but that gets him to two under and you're thinking, hey, here comes Rory McIlroy. Again, after a nice drive with 121 yards, he missed the green to the left, chipped to there, and as he did yesterday, struggled with the short putts. As a matter of fact, from three to five feet, is 134th on tour this year. And now he's two over at the fourth, and well, this is another look, good look at birdie that he lets gets away. So he's staying at two over, Brandel, and uh, lurking at the cut, and now we come to the par three fifth. Well, a dangerous stretch of golf, as you have talked about, and we have continued to talk about throughout this event. He missed the 15th to the right. He made double bogey. This one did not find the water, but it was right on the edge and some thick rough. And we have talked about continuously how much he struggles around the greens. He would struggle here. And he would basically have the same chip shot again and eventually go on to make another double bogey. And he would shoot 72, finishes it four over. Not officially missing the cut yet, but uh, Really could see no way that the cut line would go to four. So we'll say unofficially he's going to miss the cut now for a 12th time in his career. Last week at Riviera, Jordan Spieth missed the 13th cut of his career. They are 22 and 26 respectively. Woods is 40. He's missed 15 for his career. Another uh, incredible number that shows you just how dominant, how good Tiger was in his day. Still missing just 15 cuts on the PGA Tour. Taking a look again at our leaderboard with Fowler, Walker, Garcia, and Scott. All four players spending time in the top 10 in the world. All looking good heading into the weekend. So for Rory McIlroy, uh, we often talk about uh, he would be more like Phil than he would as far as Tiger, as far as the, uh, the inconsistencies. And no probably golf tournament as inconsistent as this one, the Honda Classic. He's won it, he's finished in the top five, and he's missed the cut a few times. Well, he's played, uh, if we just take a look on, on the whole, Rory McIlroy in his career has played 102 times, 67 times he's been top 25. If you look at Tiger Woods when he'd played 102 events, 88 times he was in the top 25. Rory McIlroy is not often out of the top 25. You alluded to the fact that he reminds you more of a Phil Mickelson. Around the greens, Phil Mickelson is a hinge and hold advocate. Matter of fact, he says it's the only way to chip. When you watch Rory McIlroy, there's a similar sort of motion going on there. But what he does not do that Phil Mickelson does do is that Roy McIlroy plays the ball well back in his stance. Phil Mickelson has a tendency more often than not to play it up in his stance, so he doesn't have as much forward shaft lean to start with. And Phil Mickelson then hinges very quickly on the way back and does a very nice job, in spite of the fact that he says he hinges and holds, of eliminating a little bit of that forward shaft lean and using more of the bounce. Rory McIlroy, conversely, plays it so far back, and because he sort of drags the handle back, along with all that forward shaft lean, he comes into almost in the same way Jason Day and Steve Stricker does. It's like he's caught between two methods. He's trying to drag it back and drag it through without a lot of release of the club, but he's got the ball too far back in his stance, and it really causes him some problems around the greens. Caught him between two methods. He's almost got a, uh, a lack of hinge, like a Jason Day and a Steve Stricker, but he's got the ball so far back yeah. in his stance, he enters 
introduces the leading edge. And, and the thing about leading edge chipping is there are there have been very proficient leading edge chippers. I go to Greg Norman. He used the leading edge and he had shaft lean, but he was very proficient. But he grew up in Australia on very tight lies where you had to be extremely uh, precise in your strike of the golf ball. That's the thing about leading edge chipping. There is no margin for error. And to Brandel's point, when you play the ball back, you're compounding that error. And that's what Phil Mickelson does. He does look like he holds it more than he really does. He's releasing a lot of that hinge and using the bounce that Phil does. Um, that is the, the the great chippers. I think I, I look at the Ernie L's and the, the Tiger Woods in his heyday and um, players like that that use the bounce. They have margin of inches before the ball and after the ball. And that's what bounce does. It gives you forgiveness on a lot of different lies. And I think uh, Roy McIlroy might want to look at moving the ball up to Brandel's point, but also learning to release that club a little bit more to allow him margin for error because when it's good, it's really good. But when it's bad, that thin margin for error, well, it'll bite you. Now, three consecutive rounds over par for Rory. Last time that happened, it was March of 2015. Still to come here on Golf Central, tell you what Phil Mickelson didn't do for the first time in nearly a year. Plus, Sergio Garcia, he was the leader after 18 holes. Why Garcia is still all smiles at the Honda. And the United States pointing to a gigantic Ryder Cup this fall. The efforts they are taking to be a more unified team. Stay with us. Golf Central is brought to you by the new Titleist AP Irons. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.